We're back in Tokyo. We're back at the Rio Goku Koku Gikan, another packed house for a top class card, including a world championship challenge. Nobuhiko Takada against Salman Hasimiko. We've got Ray Lloyd against Yuko Miyato. Bad News Allen takes on Yoshihiro Takayama. And Gene Leidig opens up against Hiromitsu Kanehara. <laughs> Hiromitsu Kanahara of Tokyo, only 20, one of the fastest rising young stars on the circuit. Comes into the fight, though, on the back of two defeats. Undefeated in 13, nine were in the Junior League. Can he come back? Gene Leidick is another new boy from the USA. This is only his second fight, hoping to improve on defeat in his opener against Miyato. Waiting to describe the action at ringside, Jeff Thompson. First of all, our technical expert, Ted Pelt. This is going to be a real interesting bout for me. Hiromitsu Kanehara has been training with Bui Cho Aikun on his kicking and striking techniques. And I know that Gene Leidek has been training in his blocking techniques. Well, Kanehara in the light green trunks and he's showing that the training can well pay off. Gene, Gene Leidek, I don't know, I don't think those blocks are going to do it for me. And though so far Kanehara has hasn't been able to get through. He's blocking much better than he did against Miyato, though. Kanehara got great mobility and flexibility in those kicks. Well, you see what a good coach can do. I've never seen Kanehara throw kicks so quick and powerful and precision before. But Leidick weathers the storm. Yeah, as I see, as I said, Leidick has obviously done his homework, too because he's, he's blocking those strikes much better than he did in his previous battle against Miyato. No Leidick yet to register a win in UWFI. Shoot sign there from referee Wada to Leidick. No response. That shoot sign was for the cross lock on the knee applied by Hiromitsu Kanehara. And the first point is lost. You saw there initially no response from Leidick, but he made it to those ropes quick enough. Kanehara very light on these feet. Gene Leidek with the size and weight advantage has to stick on Kanehara. Nice, nice gut wrench suplex. He took him over with a beautiful backdrop and here he goes with the Achilles tendon hold. Oh, slap across the face. Well, I don't care what technique Kanehara's got. I wouldn't stand for that. And he's trying to, he's trying to intimidate Gene Leidick right now. I don't think that slap really had any intention of hurting him. He just wanted to aggravate him. Well, I think he did that. Leidick's replying and returning the compliments. But they're continually reversing that Achilles tendon hold, and Gene Leidick takes the upper hand and makes Kanehara escape to the ropes. 14 points each. And here's where Gene Leidick has to watch out. He has to... He has to be blocking those kicks. He took a nice Good. kick to the Great. side of the head, and that could be it. Kenny Hara said, Ooh. Now that is certainly non-sporting like there from Kanahara. Nevertheless, he's really pumped up and determined to take Gene Leidick out. Leidick gonna have to watch those kicks. Ooh. Side suplex. I think Kenny Hara will be all right, but... And Gene Leidig is trying to kick, which he shouldn't do. Well, if he could put a bit more technique, I'm sure Kenny Hara would certainly be suffering under that onslaught. Gene Leidig's kicking technique isn't going to hurt Kenny Hara. You see here, he doesn't have his weight behind it. He's just kicking with a leg. 
He yep. should just stick. He, he should just stick to what he's good at. He should block those kicks, whether Kanehara's kicks impact, move inside and try to set up a suplex and wrestle him. Had them a big legs. <laughs> Very big legs. He's obviously been doing a lot of deep knee benders. They're like tree stumps practically. I know I certainly want to wouldn't want to be hit by them. And that's all the power that he uses when he does like his belly to back and belly to belly suplex. Mm. This could be interesting. There it is, Kanehara with a reverse to kill his tendon hold, dragging him to the middle of the ring, preventing him from escaping to the ropes. Not to see if that strength can get him to the ropes. He's going for the cross lock. But Gene Lydic stood up and now actually he has Kanehara's Achilles tendon in trouble. This Gene Lydic's an excellent wrestler. Going for the cross lock on the knee. Shoots on for Kanehara, makes it to the ropes. Pretty even, um, evenly matched right now. 11 to 12. Cool. These kicks are soon gonna find their marks if we're not careful. Gene Lydic is doing a pretty good job at blocking those kicks, but he can't just stay on defense the whole time. He can't stay in there and survive. He has to go on offense, because one of those kicks are bound to get in there. And they look pretty powerful, too. Uh, without a doubt. In the same way as Lydic has learned to block, I think he should learn how to kick or strike. <laughs> kind of hard trying to break that grip, trying to set up that arm bar and headlock. And that shoot sign. Uh, no, he's give up offering there to Lydic. Uh -oh. He's going to go for that shoulder straight arm bar. Gene Lydic with a sleeper hold. Well, the crowd found something amusing, but I see nothing amusing in the pain that is being dished out in this bout. He takes him down, but in a bad position. Yes, Kanehara was always going to make it to the ropes there, but blowing uncomfortably. Seems in pain, 11 points each. Lydic giving a good account of himself. Very good account. This is only his second fight, and it seems like he's really adapted well. He learned from that loss against Miyato. And he's blocking very well against those strikes and kicks, which he didn't do in the last fight. However, like we've said before, he can't just survive. He can't just stay in the ring and continue to just defend against those strikes. He, he has to set up his own offense if he expects to win the match. Ooh. Belly to belly. You notice he kind of pounced him off the ropes to do that too. And now he's going for the cross lock arm bar. Not sure you'll get it because it seems a contest of strength at the moment. There's not much technique being applied. Shoot sign signal. It's a light. It. He can't even see the shoot sign, I don't think. There it is. He's trying to break that grip and extend that arm. He is going for it, isn't he? Once you let the arm go, that's it. There's no way you can fight against it. It's like a country sending their army to a faraway country. Once you're once your men go a little bit too far away, then you can't win the war. Ooh, beautiful kick to the midsection, but, yeah, but Kanehara hurt. Kane hurt himself. I think he caught his shin on Lydic's elbow. It looked like he was hopping back. Ooh, belly to belly. Let me tell you something. When you, when you do kick and hit an elbow, and I've done it many a time, it hurts. As you can see there, Lydic taking advantage of that. Well, to the viewers who don't, who don't know that, believe me, when you, when you kick somebody and your shin connects to their elbow or their knee, it's very painful. Ice and elevation time, but I don't think Kanahara's going to get the chance somehow. Lonic seems pretty intent. Only during this bout goes on for a while longer. Oh, looked like Kanahara was going to try to drag him up and set him up for the belly-to-back suplex, but... He gave up on the German suplex and he just went for the sleeper hold. Hey. Kanahara has a one point lead, 10 to 9. Yeah. See there, Lydic finding his way to the ropes. With his leg. Ooh. Heel kick, but not enough power. And Gene Lydic, Lydic just catches it and takes him down. Give up. Cross lock on the knee. No advantage yeah. either way. Uh-oh. Just as I speak. <laughs> He's got a good ankle lock, but he... He let go of the ankle lock, but he managed to make him escape to the ropes, and 
That could take Kanahara's footwork away. He's been showing excellent kicking and techniques and um, footwork, but... Ooh, what a rapid flurry of strikes there. Good head blows. He should be setting him more up with body combinations, though. Body head combinations. Very even belt. Nine points each. Neither fighter seeming to have the advantage. Kanehara doing a lot of work, but he can't seem to finish off a very durable Gene Lydic. And Gene Lydic has really improved. He's really adapted to the style well. He knows what to do now, and he's taking Kanehara down to the ground, which is where he should keep him if he expects to win this thing. But Kanehara has his own thing. He looks like he's going for a clockhead scissor hold. Now he's going. He might be going for a double wrist lock as well. And it looks like he has it. This could be it. Uh oh, chicken wing face lock. He has the chicken wing on Lydic. And Lydic escapes the ropes. The crowd really appreciated that. And in my view, that was great escapism by Lydic. Oh, Trump's going with flying kick. But Lydic is trying to strike Kanehara, which he shouldn't be doing. It's having little effect. He should stick to what he's good at wrestling techniques he has a good face lock on Kanehara right now corn almost axe kicks from the floor by Kanehara now well, he's but trying to knee in the head him. Gene Lydek trying to set up that one submission that's going to win it for him he's in pretty good position he's in the middle of the ring he's trying to go for the cross lock on the arm cross lock arm bar and he got it but that was a good technique. You notice he rolled over him and pushed him over. The only trouble is when he rolled him over, he it made Kanehara too close to the ropes. Great technique there. Nothing Ooh. in it. Eight points each. Ooh. Devastating low kicks. Yeah, but look at Lydic's legs. Those thighs are big. They yeah. can take the punishment. Yeah, but not too much. After a while, those low kicks are going to take their toll. And so is that belly-to-belly oh. -belly suplex. I was going to say, Kanehara's head seems to take the toll. And Lydic's oh. got a useful lead. Five. Four points back now. Seven. He's looking at the Eight. score. Look at this. Front suplex, right? And he makes him land on the back of his neck and head. That'll really shake your equilibrium up. Well, Kanehara seems to try to shake it off. Lydic's strategy is good. He's trying to catch those kicks and then go to work himself on his strength. He should watch out about catching those low kicks because he'll leave his head open. Single leg boss for Brad. Lydic yet to register a win in UWFI. Uh -oh. I'm wondering if it could be an upset now. This could be it. Ooh, so close. Kind of hard trouble. He points to three now, Lydic. I wonder if he's just going to try and go for the points win. I don't know. One suplex could do it. If he could score a knockdown, that'll be it. They'll stop the bout, and Gene Lydic will win it by a TKO. And he's got to watch those kicks. Yeah, one of those nasty kicks could just take Gene Lydic down. But Gene Lydic is doing an excellent job on weathering those blows. But Kanehara goes for a cross lock on the knee once again, and... We see Lydic escape to the ropes. Lydic's lead reduced to seven points. I think that at this point, the first one who makes a mistake is going to lose the bout. They're pretty equally matched. Gene Lydic has shown a great deal of progression, and um, he's really done his homework, and he knows what to do. It's surprising that this is only his second fight, and he has the right idea, and he's able to execute a lot of his moves. But like we see Kanehara, he's really improved in his kicking techniques. Bowie's doing a great job in in coaching him on his kicking techniques and striking techniques. This will all be down to discipline now. I think it's that first mistake that's going to determine the winner of the bout. Who wants it the most? I think both fighters are going to have to really Ooh. reach deep down inside. Kanehara with a cross lock arm bar. Once again, Lydic escaping to the ropes. Very few points left for each fighter. They're going to have to watch out now. Yes, yeah, only three points in it. 6-3 in Lydic's favor. Getting on still. Lie on his toes. Ooh. Kick strike combination there. And they look pretty cautious, you know. Um, neither fighter is really rushing in. 
This could go to the distance. I think both realize just how close it is. Uh-oh. Achilles tenant hold. I think they both realize how close this match is, and they really don't want to give it up. They don't want to take any chances and lose the bout after all this. It, it could go to the distance, but... See Gene Leidick trying to reverse the Achilles tendon hold, and he does. Kanehara in trouble. I'm sure Leidick realizes he's close to registering his first victory. But as we see here, Kanehara's not going to make it easy for him. No, Kanehara putting his right arm under Leidick's right arm, trying to break that hold. And he gets it. He broke it, and he has a cross lock on Gene Leidick's oh, right be. leg. That could be it. No, the shoot sign was offered, but... Let it made to the ropes. This crowd really appreciating this bout. Five points to three. Two points in it. Leidick leads. This is amazing. Gene Leidick is really showing a great account of himself. This is the second fight, and he's standing toe to toe with Kanehara. And so far, he's weathered those brutal kicks pretty well. Not all of them, but a lot of them. Enough, just just enough to get Kanehara down on the ground to set him up for wrestling and submission technique. Uh oh, this could be the belly to back. If he can just muster the strength in those big legs of his, and lift Kanehara, we could see him registering his first and all important victory in UWFI. Kanehara, see, Kanehara knows it's coming. He's, he's going to try to reverse that belly to back. Uh oh, seems to an opportunity. Straight arm shoulder bar. But. Gene Leidick curls out of that. Excellent wrestler. Gene Leidick showing a great exhibition of technique and reversal. And he has very good counters. Whenever Kanehara tries to set up a submission hold, he's been pretty successful in countering it. He's setting up his own submission. Uh-oh. Belly to belly. Beautiful point, too. You notice Gene Leidick is really good at his suplexes. They're really almost picture perfect. Well, there's only two points left in Kanehara's tank. Great bounce. Single arm drag, and now he's setting up for the cross lock on the arm. Shoot sign being offered to Lydek. And a black eye beginning to, to surface on his, just on his cheekbone there. He's working hard for this victory tonight if he gets uh -oh. it. Straight arm bar. But Gene Lydek, he, he, he manages to find a way out of it. He's been doing very good tonight. And now he's trying to set up a face lock on Kanehara. Great wrestling technique. Even though he hasn't found that exact opening that he's desperately looking for, he always finds a way to escape from Kanehara's submission holds. But so has Kanehara. Been a very close bout. And I think it's, right now it's up to their stamina. Who yes. has more stamina right now? Stamina and will to win. Uh oh. Be careful. Nobody's got to me. Last one minute. One minute left in this bout. Looks as though it could be an explosive come finish. Lydic says to come on. This could be the glory he needs. Lydic is trying to set up a suplex. Kanehara realizes that and keeps on walking away. Oh. Neck throw, but you notice Kanehara grabbed that top rope and. Use the ropes very skillfully to avoid that throw. Kicking. And those kicks, by the way, are legal. Kick to the midsection. Ooh, Kick to the head. Weathered those two kicks well. You notice Leidick is quick. Those, those, kicks, those kicks are really quick and sharp, but he's managed to put his hands up and block all of them. Both it's amazing. Tired, but Leidick wants his picture. And I think that's going to be it. We only have about five Go seconds on. left in this bout. Great bout. Well, that's it. It went the distance. Look at this. Belly to belly. Look at that perfect bridge. Boom, right on the back. It'll be interesting to see how the referee calls this one, Ted. And they declared a draw. It went to the distance. Well, I'd hate to really have to determine a winner. It was a pretty equal fight. I think Lydic just did enough.
Next up, Bad News Allen against Yoshihiro Takayama. Takayama Yoshihiro! Yoshihiro Takayama, the reputation of being the tall man, but the tall man who cannot win. He did draw unusually with Tom Burton last time out, trying hard to get back into winning ways. He's already lost to bad news. Just two wins in his ten fights. At first they didn't take bad news, Alan. Seriously, the old man of Madison Square Garden is improving though all the time after losing his first two. He's won his last three fights, including victory over Takayama last time out. a head bump at News Allen, but I don't think that was such a good idea. Well, this is a rematch. Bad News Allen put away Takayama the last time with a cross lock on the arm, and I'm sure Takayama really wants to redeem his dignity. I think he wants to get back for that loss, and well, he looks pretty determined tonight. This should be, this should really prove to be an exciting bout. Referee Wada having to show his strength and technique there. Both fighters in the black trunks. Bad news, Alan, with his distinctive beard and bald head. This is really interesting to watch. It looks like Takayama has improved a little bit on his striking techniques. He's still not as good as he could be, but from the last fight I've seen him, he, they look much more sharper. Well, we know bad news, Alan has amassed himself a pretty impressive record. Five fights, three wins, two losses. Seems to be adapting pretty well to UWF I-10. Yeah, and he has excellent wrestling credentials. He's a uh, former Olympian. He was in the Olympics. He's earned a bronze medal for, in judo. And at 46, I say he's showing great durability. I don't know if credentials will matter in this bout. I'm sure Takayama very anxious to chuck up um, some more wins on his record and climb that ladder. Well, I think he'll have his work cut out. I don't think Bad News Allen's going to give him an easy passage. Bad News Allen really has the ring savvy. He, he, he knows what to do in that ring. Even though he's not a kicker and a striker, he's, he's shown in the past he knows how to fight people who can strike. He, he takes one kick, but he doesn't just stay there. He moves inside. He weathers the impact. If somebody throws a kick, he'll either move into it or out of it. But he's always on top of the opponent, and he really knows how to use that extra weight to his advantage. And I think it shows in his record. Oh, and he, without a shadow of a doubt, the judo martial arts self-defense aspects of his fighting, coupled with his wrestling skills. And even though I said he's a judo fighter, even though his opponent isn't wearing a jacket, he seems to be able to find something to grab on because those throws really seem to be working for him. Especially that one neck throw, or the um, more than a neck throw, he usually uses like a machikomi, what they call in judo, a machikomi or harai goshi to hip take throw. his yeah his hip throw. He either uses a neck throw, a hip throw, or one arm drag, the iponzioi, and he sets up that cross lock and. That's won a lot of his matches. Yep, very skillful, very experienced. The action, beginning to warm up as they posture off. Takayama trying to strike his way into distance before getting onto his groundwork. Bad news, Allen, parrying those knee strikes. Takayama trying to set up a suplex right now, but... You notice Bad News Allen saw that go, ooh, good kick to the midsection, though. But Allen is tough. Hey, Bad News Allen just shook that up and said, come on. Oh, Forearm. Give him back some of the treatment he received. He looks mad. Tries to trip Takayama. 
Yes, yet again, Ben News Allen using a wide variety of judo techniques. And I'm not sure if that was a hook. No, they... Referee Wada stepped straight in there. He kind of punched him in the eye. And referee Wada stops about for a moment. I don't know if they'll take a point off of Bad News Allen, but... No, just a warning. Takayama's kicks look like they have improved. Oh, what a good throw. But like I said, even though Bad News Allen isn't a striking fighter, he's a pure wrestler. He knows how to take those kicks, move inside, and turn that into his advantage. Cole. Nice strike there, and it's a big, powerful man. Oh, there he goes. There he goes with the Ponzioia, or one-arm drag. Just weathering all the strikes. There he goes again. Oh, this could be it. This could be it. The Ponzioia, one-arm drag into the cross lock. Great technique. Bad news, Alan. Really shake class. Excellent setup for that submission, too. And a deep look as they shake hands. Next up, Ray Lloyd faces Yuko Miyato. <laughs> Ray Lloyd of the USA, tall and well built, another American switching from US style wrestling, still very much a novice, this is only his first fight, he had defeat last time out against Tamura. Yuko Miyato from Kanagawa, 30 years old, very much the journeyman fighter. He comes, though, into this bout after a welcome victory over Leidig. That was his first win in the last 10 outings. Well, I'm not sure if this is a bit of a mismatch, Ted. I mean, Miyato. 16 fights, Ray Lloyd only one fight. And you just just don't seem to think that he'll be able to weather the experience of Miyato. I don't know, but you see the big, huge weight and size advantage, height advantage. This is a big boy, this Ray Lloyd, and he has a solid amateur background, but once again, it looks like Miyato is gonna have to overcome a bigger opponent tonight with speed and technique and experience. I think he showed in his last Showing that he's capable of that. Lloyd finding out the blue corner. Miata out of the red corner. Never see it. Yep. Check it is down. Miata knows Two. exactly what to do Three. there. Weak in the engine room. Five. Lloyd takes the count. Well, most of the time, Miata is going up against larger, bigger, larger, and stronger opponents. Well, that definitely took the wind out of him. Yeah. Ooh. And that's what he has to watch out for. He doesn't want to be in close range. Ooh. Actually, submission-wise, I think Miyato would have the upper hand. Ray Lloyd being more of a pure amateur-style wrestler. But he's a big, pure amateur-style wrestler. But like we know, the old saying, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. That's one of, that could be one of Miyato's sayings. He's going right now for the face lock. I'd have to say, when it comes to submission, Miyato definitely has the upper hand. Referee Wada very quickly applying a shoot sign option to Ray Lloyd. And it doesn't matter how big or strong a man is, once you catch a vulnerable point in a submission hold, there's no way to escape. The only way you can escape is to escape to the ropes, grab the ropes, or to give up. Miyato leading. A fairly big lead, 15 points to 11. Well, that knockdown cost Ray Lloyd three points, and I'm sure Miyato's trying to... He's looking for an opening for another kick to knock him down. Except Miyato doesn't look 
exactly too intimidated when he's on the ground with Ray Lloyd. He's willing to wrestle with him. I guess that's because he feels much more confident when it comes to submission techniques. The referee while was offering Ray Lloyd the shoot sign, and I thought he was out stretching to try and clasp his hand. Look at that. I'm stretching his arm. There's a face lock. 15 to 10. Five point lead. And Miyato lead. Surprisingly enough, we see tonight Miyato, instead of going to more striking techniques, he's actually engaging in wrestling with Ray Lloyd. And yeah. I think he has a pretty good chance if he can set up a good submission. Right now he's going for that straight arm shoulder arm lock. Yes, Miyato's record of 16 fights and only three wins with 13 losses would almost determine that he was a bad fighter, but he's a very good technician and it always gives a good account of himself. Well, it's not always the record that counts. I mean, we've seen Miyato fight many times before and he's always an exciting fighter to watch and he's always a smart, intelligent fighter. The problem is he's a small man in a big man's sport. Yes, I think that's being certainly demonstrated here. He's dumped on the canvas by Ray Lloyd. But he's not intimidated at all when it comes to the ground wrestling. He's not exactly escaping the ropes. And we see Miyato shooting for an Achilles tendon hold on Ray Lloyd. And that Achilles tendon hold or a heel cross. hold or a cross lock on the knee will be enough to put, a, put Ray Lloyd out. Anybody for that matter. Oh. Ray Lloyd. Lights in defiance. Ray Lloyd going for his own Achilles tendon hold right now. This could be a stalemate. Miyato's let go of his Achilles tendon hold, and he's just trying to break Ray Lloyd's Achilles tendon hold, which probably means that it, it is affecting his ankle. We see Miyato escape to the ropes. Well, Lloyd gets his first point on the scoreboard, 14 to 10, Miyato leads. Okay, here's where Ray Lloyd has to be extra cautious. He's going to want to take him down to the mat, which he's doing right now. That was an interesting looking front suplex. It looks like he took him over the wrong way. And Miyato looks stunned from that. But very skillfully uh -oh. escapes. But yes, looks in trouble. It was that suplex. Ray Lloyd did an interesting looking suplex. Miyato taking the count. It kind of looks like he picked him up oh. a little the wrong way, and Miyato really didn't expect to fall that way. Yeah, that's what made it hard to break that fall. And he's son. He went down for the count. He loses three points for that. Yes, one point in it, 11 to 10. Now they're having a, a slapping match. But you notice Ray Lloyd's slaps had no effect on Miyato. He's like, yeah, sure, come on. <laughs> well, Miyato is hitting with the heel of his hand. He's hitting with the palm and heel of his hand and putting his weight behind those blows. And they can be very effective, as we've seen. One-arm drag, beautiful one-arm drag, and he's going to try to set up the cross-lock armbar. And Miyato feels it coming. He knew it, he knew it was coming, and he's trying to quickly reverse the submission on Ray Lloyd's leg. Kick to the back. Trying to set up something. I think Miyato's going to a spinning back kick. I could always smell that thing. He set it up beautifully. Well, I knew he had that rolling savant in him. I knew it had to be coming up, and Ray Lloyd just gave him the opening. He, he was in a wrestling stance, which left his midsection totally wide open. This, he that. just opened up for that. Opening up an 11 point to seven lead as well, Miyato. Miyato can always seem to set up that one kick. Uh -oh. Oh, oh, nice reversal. Impressive. That arm bar in the middle of the ring. That's it. Very impressive. Great stuff. Look at this. Well, it was the kick that softened him up, but it was also Miyato's superior submission tech, on, um, su submission technique on the ground that won this bout. Great victory for Miyato. Win number four. Now, the top of the bill, the World Heavyweight Championship, Takada against Hasimiko. Big interest in Tokyo from the press, the first Russian to challenge for the World Heavyweight title. Oh, no. Bang. 
イベントプロレスリング世界ヘビー級選手権試合を行います青コーナーより挑戦者サルマン・ハシミコフ選手の入場です赤コーナーよりチャンピオン高田信彦選手の入場です。ここで本日の特別立ち会い人をご紹介いたします元 MWA 世界ジュニアヘビー級チャンピオンミスターダニー・ホッジダニー・ホッジズ the former world junior heavyweight champion one of the legends stepping into the ring 元 IWA 世界ヘビー級チャンピオンミスター・ビル・ロビンソン Bill Robinson, former super heavyweight champion of the world, a superstar from the past, still recognized today. They join Luthez in the ring. Now everyone stands for the national anthems. はじめに、君が代の水槽。続いてロシア国家の水槽。
続きまして認定宣言I have a very important proclamation to announce. Tonight, I am here to see a wrestling contest between Hashimakov and Nobuhiko Takada for the undisputed heavyweight wrestling championship of the world. My original 90-year-old undisputed championship belt is at stake. May the best man emerge as the one and only true wrestling champion of the world. And thank you for your kind attention. Salman Hasimikov of the Soviet Union, 40 years of age now, career stretching back to 1973 when he first won the World Amateur title. A total of four world titles. Two years ago, though, he turned professional and he's well known in the United States and Japan on the pro wrestling circuit. <laughs> Nobuhiko Takada from Kanagawa is quite simply the best. 31 years old, a great all-rounder. He can kick, he can hit, he can wrestle. It's his all-round ability that makes him what he is, the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world with that one defeat, and that was to Gary Albright, but he avenged it. Well, introductions and ceremony's over. Another test to Takada's seeming invincibility in the form of Salman Kashmikov. How do you read it, Ted? An unknown entity. Well, Kashmikov, Kashmikov. But anyway, this guy has excellent wrestling credentials. He's, he's going up against Takada tonight. And I don't know, I really don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know if he can block against the kicks or the strikes. All I know is he's an excellent amateur wrestler who's been in the Olympics before. He's won the Soviet Union freestyle heavyweight title on six different occasions. Ooh. I don't think he'll be able to, to, to do him justice. I don't know. Takata didn't even throw that kick very hard. It was like more like a distance kick, but it seems to be bothering Hashimikov already. Ooh. Nice arm dragon. Going for the cross lock on the arm. Hashimikov has also, on six different occasions, been the European heavyweight amateur wrestling champion, and he's also won four world titles. But we know Nobuhiko Takada, he's the undisputed world heavyweight pro wrestling champion. And tonight, his title's at stake. Yes, Luthez has stated that the belt is up for grabs again. And Takada. Defending his title. Oh. Beautiful single, single arm drag. And he's trying to set up for the cross lock arm bar. Even though we said he's an amateur wrestler, he's obviously, he knows a lot of submission holds too. Kashmikov reflecting the changes of attitude towards sports in Russia. He's been allowed to go professional. And that sees him here tonight challenging Takada. And he's doing pretty good because even when he's on the ground, not only is he a wrestler, he's from Russia. So, well, he must know a lot of sambo techniques. And he's exhibiting him. He's certainly exhibiting him against Takata. Well, he's much respected. His endurance, his technique, and power are legendary. The only thing I'm worried about this guy is when Takata threw those kicks, he really had no intention of hurting him. Those were like he was just trying to make some distance. Takata wanting to warm into this almost. Making no risk, getting a lot of instructions from outside the ring, but 
I think that needs structure for him and put him like on I his said, knee. He doesn't know what to do about the kicks, and Takata's really not throwing those kicks too hard. He's just trying to set up distance, but Hashimikov doesn't know what to do about him. Now he looks in trouble, but he's a strong man. He's signaled he's ready to carry on. What he should do is rush in and try to catch those kicks. Well, that's what he's, so he's just done that, Ted. To kind of try to work his way free. He looks a little bit confused. He doesn't know what to do. Exactly. I think those low kicks have stunned him a little bit. Well, he seems to be fighting on instinct. To cut a momentarily stunned. He's going for the belly to belly. And he takes him over. And he got it. Good bridge. This is a strong man. He's close, he's 275 pounds. He has a great weight advantage over Takata. And I'm sure he, he really knows how to get under his opponent's center of gravity. I think if Takata's not careful, Hashimikov, if he grabs him in the clinch, he'll really be able to take him for a ride a couple of times, like we saw earlier with that belly-to-belly -belly suplex. Takata almost looked like a tiger battling with a bear then. And Shoot sign having no effect in this bout whatsoever. Takata's still very calm. He doesn't look alarmed at this moment. You notice Hashmikov's right leg is really open for that low kick. Oh, oh, oh he got a kick to the midsection. Oh. oh, kick to the head. Hashmikov didn't even know what to do with that. Shaking his head, trying to clear his head. But um, Hash lucky for Hashmikov. Um, Takata didn't connect with his shin, he only connected with the instep, which has the pads on the on the tip of the shoe. You watch. I, believe me, I've taken a kick with a pad with an instep of about 70 miles an hour, and it has hurt. Kicks him right to the cheek. If it would have been the shin or the knee, Hashimikov would have been out. But he manages to catch that one. Survives the storm. Hashimikov having to really dig into his... Storage tank of endurance. And even with Hashimikov's excellent wrestling credentials, um, Takata's en engaging with him in wrestling. He's doing pretty well. Takata always seems to want to better his opponent at their own strengths. I think that's what makes him such a durable and great champion. I think he feels pretty confident with his kicks, but he's not exactly going to his kicks. He's engaging in wrestling, but that can change, right? Oh, oh. Well, it just uh, did. Oh, and has he been frustrated. He's a little bit frustrated. Oh. He doesn't know how to block the knees. Oh, has become. Well, he takes him off his feet. Once again, he's going to try to take him over with a suplex. Has been trying to find the right one. Right there. Right leverage there, and he seemed to have got it. And that was a pretty good throw, and Takata looks a little bit stunned. And a little bit upset. He's crab loving it. No down score. Takata. Oh. Now that nice was spectacular. Bad news, Allen's textbook. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, he's going for the cross lock arm bar, too, and that's <laughs> it. Look at this. That was a beautiful hit throw set up for that cross lock on the arm. There's your winner, and still, World Heavyweight Pro Wrestling Champion, Nobuhiko Takada. Continued invincibility, but for me, there's only one man who can step in there and really extend him, and that's Gary Orgata. Listen to this crowd, hero worship. He seemed pretty much in control for that match. I think he knew he had his kicks working for him, and even when he was on the ground, he seemed pretty confident against the bigger 275-pound Rashmikov. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, three judges, three judges, all former champions, witnessed his wrestling contest along with the referee. We all agree that Takata won, and he retains the belt and the title of undisputed heavyweight champion of the world.